Hello everyone, it's certainly been a while since I've last done a video on a gearing guide, hasn't it? It's actually been over two years since I made that guide back in Alio when people were for some reason arguing geens were bad because you had a higher chance of getting status ailments when only tiny mobs like those stupid lizards could inflict status on you constantly. However, that passed aside, that's neither here or there. This is a level 80 gearing guide for PSO2 NGS. For those who don't know me, I'm Blaze Latias, or as many on Shift-Free know me, Estelle. I'm a speedrunner that AFKs 90% of the time because Sega gives me absolutely nothing to do for fun. That's why I'm making this guide. Typically, I do a lot of solo content on this channel with some group content showcases when the chance arises. Also, yes, that is a fancy Flugelgard double saber being shown in this video. Shouts to my friend Fenrir and my alliance Classical for allowing me to buy his drop. Without him, I might have never gotten a Flugelgard drop this early. With that out of the way, let's get back to the guide itself. Overall, gearing is very straightforward in NGS. Unfortunately, despite this, some people live under a rock like Patrick Star from Spongebob, so guides like this are still important tools to have around. As a bonus, this should at least help new players who are just getting into the game know what they need to do to actually gear up so you aren't fixing Alt Secreta 1 on their gear in Endgame. This guide will be broken up into three segments, weapons, armor, and affixes. Starting off with weapons, as of the current meta, 10 star weapons are currently best in slot. Unless you're that one crazy guy in ship free saying Burshmills beats Tizza and Flugar weapons because of 100% crit. Which, by the way, that's not true, but maybe he knows something we don't. Anyways, weapons can be split up into essentially three categories. Those are entry level, mid level, and high end. For entry level weapons, you have the Bernaga and Neosa strain weapons. For those watching this in the future, any seasonal weapon that releases is basically your entry level weapon into whatever the current endgame is. Bernog weapons have 894 attack when maxed out and have the potential season cycle unit. This is just a copy paste potential Sega likes to put on a lot of their seasonal weapons. It has 26 potency and 10% critical hit rate and 10% damage resistance. Overall, this is a decent entry level weapon that's easy to obtain, making it a good starting choice. Next up, we have the Neosa Strain weapons. On the other hand, while also having 894 attack, has a potential Flowing Spring unit. This has 37 percent potency and increases your Photon Blast gain when attacking by 25%, which is pretty cool. Upon using a Photon Blast, you also gain 50% PP consumption reduced for 90 seconds. Overall, a very strong and pretty easy to obtain weapon as the Aegis Integra Exchange item can be obtained through various shop vendors without having to step into content which drops in like Dark Falls Aegis. Next up are the mid-level weapons. These consist of the Vershmels and Neelik 9-star weapons. These weapons require a fair amount of grinding to obtain, but are the next best weapons from entry-level weapons. Neil's Justinian also falls into this category too if you're trying to pump out as much damage as possible into Dark Falls Solus or any other lightly notable bosses. So Dark Falls Aegis and just plain old Dark Falls. Vershmels is the first weapon we have, which is a material exchange weapon from the Lucille Exploration Instance quests. This weapon has 992 base attack and a potential of Everblight unit, which grants 100% critical hit rate. The cost of this is negative 14% potency. While this is overall a very solid weapon, the biggest problem stems from the fact that you need 300 growth mints to exchange for a Fixa Terminal 1 copy of it. This grants 8% critical hit damage. Any other Fixa or blank Vergemels will be outperformed by Neil's Strain weapon, as Terminal 1 Vergemels is only slightly stronger than Fatal Free Neil's Strain weapons. Next up, we have the Melik weapon series. Melik is a reskin of the 5 star Relic weapons from Rutum, and it's yet another grindable material weapon exchange. In exchange for 150 Dread Scales, you can obtain one weapon which has no Fixa. However, despite this, it will outperform a Vershmals quite a bit, and with a Fixa, it will outperform a no Fixa Tissa weapon slightly. There are four weapon potentials for this series which are dependent on the weapon type. While I won't go into detail which weapons have which potential, the names of these potentials are Vigorous Unit, Harmonious Unit, Imbued Unit, and Explosive Unit. These potentials do basically the same thing as the 5 star counterparts to Melik, which is Relic. You can also mix and match weapon potentials as a sub weapon will take on the potential of the main weapon as well, which is pretty handy to have. Finally, we have the high end weapons. These consist of the Tizza and Flugelguard weapons. These weapons are essentially the rare chase drops that Sega puts into the game with absolutely abysmal drop rates. Unless you have deep pockets or get a lucky drop, it's not worth counting on these, and to do the same for the mid-level weapons mentioned earlier. Until something of equal power comes out later down the road, just sit tight and use a Vershmels or Melek weapon. If you do get one, however, congrats! You've got Abyss weapon! 
The Tizza weapon series has 992 base attack, the same as Vershmel's. However, like Melik, it has multiple weapon potentials which depend on the weapon type. These are Incandescent Unit, which has 36% potency and gives 15 PP whenever you create on short cooldown. Obscure Unit, which has 31% potency and gives 1% potency every 5 seconds. Each time you get hit, you lose 1% of that 5% potency gained. Finally, you have Receptive Unit, which has 36% potency and grants 15% offensive PP recovery, 20% natural PP recovery speed, and 30% damage resistance at the cost of losing 30 PP every time you take damage. Overall, all three of these weapon potentials are strong and beat Vershmel's in terms of damage. Just really rare and don't expect one to drop for you. Finally, we have the Flugel Guard weapons. Flugel Guard, or Flugel, is the current best in slot weapon. Flugel has 1031 base attack, making it moderately stronger than every previous option mentioned. But to go with this, it also has 37% potency to accompany it. This means that weapon like Vershmel's will basically never hope that we take a Flugel in terms of raw damage on average. To top this off, Flugel's weapon potential, Faithful Unit, bestows a buff to all players in the instance when a Photon Blast is used. This buff can provide things such as damage resistance or PP consumption down, for example, and it stacks with other Flugel users, allowing you to obtain multiple buffs if you were to sync up your Photon Blast timings. This weapon series has proven to be marginally more common than Tezza, but it is still extremely rare. That being said, this is the weapon to aim for and you should hope one drops. With weapons out of the way, let's talk about armor. Armor, unlike weapons, are very straightforward. You have multiple 8-star armor to choose from, all which provide the same increase in potency, however, they all come with different variations of substats. Octo Armor provides 40 HP. Octo Armor VO provides 10 power points. Finally, Octo Armor Arga, Shiza, and Belta provide some HP and some PB, but only cover two potency types as opposed to three. All of these armors, regardless of type, provide 4.5% potency per unit despite their differences. If you are a default Dan that has just reached endgame, you can also use the Eclarior or Ajax armors. The latter is commonly handed out for free in seasonal events, pre-augmented and enhanced, making it fantastic for beginners. With the Octo Rainbow out of the way, we finally have Affixes. Affixes can be divided into three categories, Entry Level, Budget Fist, and Best in Slot. I don't bore everyone breaking down what each Affix capsule does because, spoiler alert, they all do the same thing. They all provide different substats and variations of how much potency they give. I'll just list them for you. For entry level affixes, you'll want Steeridomina, Mastery IV, Aegis Soul IV, or any other Soul V capsule, Stat IV, which includes Might, Precision, and Technique, Gigas IV, which includes Gigas Might, Precision, and Technique, Ultacrita IV, and then Duable IV, which is Melra, Ratek, and Meltek. These affixes range from 2.5% to 3% potency. You can obtain most of these affixes from the personal shop, but there's also a few exchanges for them here and there. Next up, we have Budget Best in Slot. This includes the Lasile Augments, XD Capsules, and Tribable Capsules. For Budget Best in Slot, the affix capsules to look out for are LC Gladiasol, LC Halfanau, LC Gigas Mast, LC High Eldamina, Tribable, which can be either Speed, Gua, or Stamina, don't bother with Death because it provides 2.5% potency, and any variation of the XD Capsules. You can obtain the LC capsules from Lucille Exploration, and various limited quests have also given out these capsules as quest rewards. Finally, we have Best in Slot. These are craftable capsules, or basically whale gear. If you want to craft these capsules, you basically will need hundreds of uh, fodder material to create the capsules in the first place. It's much easier to get the budget Best in Slot because you can actually farm for it reasonably. That being said, if you do want to aim for absolute best in the slot, you'll want Gladiasol, Halfanel, Hyal or High Retomina, Gigas Mast, any variation of XD, and then the last slot can either be a Trillable Capsule or Grand Dreadkeeper. Finally, I'd like to mention that Dreadkeeper is not mentioned here because it does not provide any damage, and for most players, it is useless. And this is because of the Vershmel weapons not needing potency floor. If an affix isn't listed here, which is probably a considerably large list, it's because it's really not something people use anymore. And if you try to give me arguments about Dreadkeeper in the comments, I'll probably just ignore them, because no, you don't need that potency floor, damage resistance, or PP when LC Augs literally give you HP and PP galore with a bit of potency floor on the side. Also, just don't get hit. If you die, someone's just gonna revive you in two seconds anyways. You don't need damage resistance. With weapons, armor, and affixing aside, that's basically all you need to know about gearing up in the current meta for PSO2 NGS. 
Hopefully this guide sheds a light on how you can progress through the game. If you have any questions that are of course not about Dreadkeeper, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments as well. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys learned a thing or two from this video.